it's podcast day. It's podcast day. Hey friends, Mars here. Welcome, welcome in. This is the Hey Brownberry podcast where I primarily talk about my adventures in making. You are very welcome here. Thank you for coming or coming back. I am just trying to get all of you out there caught up on what I've been up to lately. It was starting to feel like the right time to put together some of the pictures and videos I've been capturing and share them with you because that's why I do this. If you'd like to find me on Instagram or Ravelry, I'm at Hey Brownberry in all the places. So let's dive right in. I am very, very fortunate that since about spring of this year, I have moved away from a traditional corporate position with a company that I loved, but no longer wanted to um, work for. And not because anything was wrong with the company or my amazing coworkers, I just didn't want to work in that capacity. So in the spring, I moved out of that role and I've been staying home and building up and cobbling together a creative profession, question mark? <laughs> it's very difficult for me still, all these months later after making that decision, to describe or even label what it is I'm doing now. Um, living as a professional creative sounds really nice, but there's something about those two words put together that gives me pause saying it and hearing it. Essentially, it has meant that, one, I get to be home much more often than my prior job, which involved a lot of travel. And two, it means that I can spend much more time working on things that bring me joy. If you've visited my channel before, you know that knitting is one of those things, spinning has become one of those things, and a constant is connecting with my friends and folks in the fiber community. Today I'll be sharing a bit about my visit with one of those friends, my bestie Maria. Maria hosts the Ninja Chickens podcast and she can be found as ninja.chickens on Instagram and ninja chickens on Ravelry. It's great that when I want to see her, I can pretty much get on a flight and within no time at all, be on her beautiful homestead. Two weeks ago almost, I did spend some time there doing something we both love, which is dyeing yarn. <laughs> the video previous to this had us working on a short film we call the, uh, Brewing the Perfect Yellow. Hopefully you've seen that. I'll link to it below. So if you haven't, or you'd like to rewatch it, you can do that. We worked on dyeing up yarn and sock blanks and even some fabric with quite a few different materials. All of the dyes that we made were created with natural dyes. They were all plant-based and some of them we found in Maria's freezer and others we used fresh from some supplies we received locally. And I was just thrilled to be able to die with Maria because she has so much knowledge to share. And with, I think, six different plants, we were able to do quite a bit of dyeing. Here's a picture of all of the things that we dyed that weekend put together. Genuinely, such a treat to work with black walnut and coreopsis and madder and goldenrod and all of these beautiful things, including some new dye materials from the Harlequin Glory Bower plant, a new to me plant type that had these beautiful blue berries called Kusagi berries. Neither of us had dyed with that before and it was fun to work on a dye material that was new to us because that meant a lot of reading and research and it meant working together to follow the steps that we found so that we could get some beautiful blues. Okay, so <laughs> wool witchery at its finest. From the research Maria's done so far, one of the ways to extract more color out of the berries 
is after you have simmered them a couple of times, you can then mash the berries and simmer them some more. Part of what I dyed while I was with Maria was project uh, project based and actually the the idea for the project and what I would use really came together as we were dying and I had ordered one of Maria's eco printed sock blanks and these are sock blanks which are machine knit and then Maria adds gorgeous colors to them The background color and the prints on these sock blanks are derived from natural dyes as well. And I just loved the look of this light grayish purple with a lot of pops of orange and peach from some eucalyptus and other leaves. This is an 85% merino and 15% tencel yarn. It's been printed with Eucalyptus and Sweet Annie, and it's a hefty sock blank. It's about 570 yards in 100 grams. So I loved these colors as soon as I saw them, and I was able to collect them while I was there. And then we dyed some other sock blanks of the same weight and material to coordinate. These sock blanks were dyed with actually a bath that was kind of put together by the two of us. It looks very red. <laughs> we yeah. shall see. Dyer's Coreopsis and Matter. Matter. And in goes <laughs> the not yet golden enough. You command these colors to create the perfect yellow. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it looks pretty already. The See, that's the color together. that marigold usually is. It looks like it's going to go red, and then you take it out, and you've got this vibrant yellow. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Beautiful. While we were playing with the formula to get a specific yellow for a project yarn that Maria was dyeing, we actually used these sock blanks to soak up some of the color, mainly some of the red and bright orange tones, because she primarily wanted a deep yellow. I wasn't particular about the exact color for these sock blanks, so it was great to be able to put several of them into the dye bath and have them come out looking such a gorgeous persimmon and peach blend. Here's another look from a photo. I'm going to make a good day tea with these colors. It's a design by Annie Lupton, which I tried on at Maria's. It's a lovely silhouette of a loose fitting v-neck shirt. And after trying it on, I was convinced that this is something I would wear all of the time. Annie Lupton has the company Boho Chic Fiber Co. I will link to Annie's original pattern in the description box below if you'd like to check it out. One of the things I've been really excited about lately is working on hand spun yarns in natural fibers that I can then dye. And most of my dyeing here at home is done with what I call foraged materials. So things I've either been given or things that I find around my yard and even food waste. I recently spun up a beautiful two ply yarn and it was something that I thought I might dye in the fiber first, but I'm actually really glad that I went all the way through the process to spin the yarn into a hand spun that I quite enjoy. It is a John Arbin fiber base, and it's called Exmoor Blueface, a gorgeous, gorgeous yarn. It was so wonderful to draft and to spin that I enjoyed every bit of that part of the process. I took that with me when I visited Maria 
all fiber play is good play. So having hand spun yarn that I could then put into the dye pot was just a huge bonus. Uh, I geeked out on that big time. So I decided that I would put it into our black walnut dye. Quite a few black walnut trees around the country are now hurling black walnuts at the ground. And we process some by taking off the husks and putting them into a big vat of hot water so that it could extract the color. It's a very rich, very reliable dye. And I love the way my hand spun came out in this cocoa chocolatey brown. I'm actually so excited to use it now. To be honest, I'm not sure if I would have been as excited to use the finished yarn um, without adding some color to it. So the combination of those two creative processes is what really brought me what I was looking for. First, we have some over-dyed yarns, which were dyed with... Pine needles and pine cones. Pine needles and pine cones. They were kind of pale. They've been over-dyed with marigolds and a little black walnut and a pinch of this and that. Mm -hmm. Then we have the same dyes on a different yarn, and we've added in a little bit of goldenrod so that we can brighten it a little bit. like gold. Stunning gold color. Next, we are simmering up some Harlequin Glory Bower berries to achieve an aqua blue. And last, we are finishing the simmer on our black walnut so we can make some golden brown. Bubble, bubble. <laughs> Yeah, wool witchery at its finest. <laughs> I will have such a good time coming up with just the right project for this. In fact, I think anything I make is just going to have some great sentimental value. Thinking about why I have been diving into spinning and then dyeing yarn makes me realize that a lot of it has to do with how slow those processes are and how how gratifying they are when you go all the way through each step. Maria and I had some really good quiet time working on a project for drying some fruit with a technique that seems to be uh, used commonly in Japan. And Maria showed me how to take ripe persimmon, persimmons, and <laughs> peel just the very thinnest uh, outer layer and then she's hanging them up to dry for several weeks. The process is called hoshigaki, and it produces a very sweet version of the persimmons. In fact, the sugar from inside the persimmons comes to the outside, the outer layer. You can follow along with that process because Maria is chronicling it all over on her Instagram, and she may even show the results on one of her podcasts. It's really, really nice to have friends who have fun fiber tools that you might not have yourself. I brought with me on this trip some Dutch wool that I had received from an Instagram friend called Sarah Jane. Hi, Sarah Jane, if you're watching. She brought me some gorgeous, minimally processed fiber when we met up at Woolen earlier this summer. We had done an exchange in which I brought her some American Tunis fiber and she brought me some Zwarbliss and some other Highland Dutch wools. Uh, Maria has a huge, beautiful drum carter and I've never used one before. So I asked her if we could spend a little time processing some of the Zwarbliss fleece. It came to me genuinely in the grease. Uh, it smells sheepy and just amazing. There's something comforting about a deep inhale of a really good wool. <laughs> Is that weird? I, uh, I brought that with me so that I could get it into a bit more of um, an aligned state for spinning. I actually had planned originally to spin it in the grease without any processing, but this was a great opportunity to try the drum carter. This machine right here. 
we're going to card up some Dutch wool. Mm -hmm. And you could even soak it with some soap in super hot water. And the super hot water is going to, um, you know, get some of that extra lanolin off if you feel like it's too sticky. Gotcha. So I'm just going to break it into a few strips and then we'll, we'll just run it through. Since I've never spun in the grease before, I decided I was just going to leave it. Yeah. It's going through two drums then. I so realize. this pulls it through and it wraps it around. This one is supposed to help it stick on there. It can also catch some of like the smaller nets. Line, oh, you can yeah. kind of go in there and nice. dig in. Oh my gosh, dude. Looks it like my hair. <laughs> <laughs> cool. That's all, it looks like a lot now. <laughs> um, coming off the carter. Here is the carded fiber. There it is. Everything is all lined up a little bit better. Still very fluffy. Still some nice lanolin in it. And I'm gonna spin it just like this. It's really, really fun to do things a bit more slowly um, and to enjoy each step. That was seriously a treat. That's the majority of what I've wanted to share with you. I love getting out some of the recordings and the photos and things that I've been taking over the last few weeks so that I can put them together in a nice little YouTube package. I really hope you enjoyed that. I think that we have such great opportunities to try new things, to explore while we're making, so I hope you're doing that too this week. If so, will you share with me? You can always do that in the comments below or over on Instagram and even on Ravelry if you want to point my attention to a project you're working on. I do get on there quite a bit. Friends, take good care of yourselves until I see you again. Okay? Bye for now. Mwah. I think that the next time, I really hope you enjoyed that.